come among us God, who cast the planets into space and cradled the sparrow in her nest. Come God and meet us here. Come among us God, you who bless the poor and the broken and stand by the sad and the strong. Come God and meet us here. Come among us God. You who dance in the silence and shine in the darkness, come God and meet us here. Thank you, Emmy, for opening our service this morning. Today is for our church, Creation Sunday. The Church of England have asked that before September, we have a service where we think about creation and climate change. We chose this Sunday because in June, the G7 countries are meeting in Cornwall and one of the items on the agenda will be climate change and as a church we want to pray for that and also become more aware of how we can make a difference to our planet. We first of all have our time of confession where we say sorry to God for the things that we have done, the things we haven't done and we seek his forgiveness. So let us pray. Lord, you delight in creation, its colour and diversity, yet we have misused the earth and plundered its resources for our own selfish ends. Lord, have mercy. You have brought order out of chaos, light in darkness, good out of evil, but we have preferred darkness in words and deed, which dishonour God's holy name. Christ have mercy. You have showered us with blessings, but we have been grudging towards others and lacking in generosity in word and deed. Lord have mercy. We know that we have a God who forgives and we seek that forgiveness. Amen. We have our collect, which is the special prayer for today. Spirit of the living God, at the beginning you moved over the face of the waters. You brought life into being, the teeming life that finds its way through earth and air and sea, that makes its home around us everywhere. You know how living things flourish and grow, how they coexist, how they feed and breed and change. Help us to understand these delicate relationships, value them, and keep them from destruction. Amen. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. And let all creation rejoice before the Lord. The earth is full of his unfailing love. The entire material world speaks of his love. Everything is, as it were, a caress of God. Let the fields be jubilant. Wild animals, let them praise the name of the Lord. To sense each creature singing the hymn of its existence is to live joyfully in God's love and hope. God has written a precious book. Look at the birds of the air. Consider how the wild flowers grow. To contemplate creation is to hear a message, to listen to a paradoxical and silent voice.
A reading from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. With every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and that shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood and destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on earth. This is the word of the Lord. A letter from Paul to the Romans. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? 
But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At the very beginning of Genesis, God spoke and the world was created. However the world came about, we believe that God was the originator, the creator, a mighty God, but also a God who is loving and intimately involved in his creation. As we read in Job 39, God knows when the mountain goat gives birth and watches the doe bear her fawn. We celebrated Trinity Sunday last week, and it's been written that the overflowing love of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit caused the world to be created. And when God created the world, he looked at it and he said it was good. The intricacies of nature, the sheer vastness of mountains and oceans, down to the star-shaped mole of North Africa with 22 little tentacles at the end of its nose, all of which are incredible. And the world is amazingly beautiful, but it's also wounded. It suffers due to our sin and our wrongdoing, the incredibly selfish ways we've lived so long with little regard for the world around us. In the reading from Romans, we see that we have a relationship with creation. We have to listen to the groaning of creation, seeing the extinction of species, the fury of increasing storms and typhoons, deepening droughts and rising floods. And we need to add our voices to those who are suffering the most, but they have done the least to cause the problem. And it is said that climate crisis has reached an unprecedented level. We are at a pivotal moment and something needs to be done. The climate is out of kilter. The CO2 emissions in the Northern Hemisphere affect people in the developing world. 619 million people in 2021 go to bed hungry. Two billion people have no access to waste management. The sea level is rising in places like Bangladesh, which is displacing whole communities. And we, well, we're drowning in single use plastic. There is a real climate change emergency and there needs to be climate justice in the world. God's heart we know is for the poor and that heart is breaking. But there are signs of hope. Christians are joining in with other organisations to change habits and to speak out. And we cannot ignore those whose food security is affected by climate change. Our unseen neighbours, people living in areas of the globe where habitats are disappearing, crops are failing and sea levels are rising. In our Old Testament reading, we had the story of God sending the rainbow as a sign of the covenant between him and the earth. The rainbow was a sign of hope. And out of despair and disaster, hope can arise. Look at Good Friday and Easter Sunday. As the rainbow was the symbol of hope for Noah, the risen Christ was the symbol of hope for the Christians. We are resurrection people, people of great hope. And in Christ, there is a new creation and we need to be his eyes, his ears, his hands and his feet in this amazing world. The Church of England has five marks of mission and the fifth mark is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation, to sustain and renew the life of the earth. Safeguard, sustain and renew. Worship, commit and speak up. We need to listen, to learn, to pray and to act. And there is so much that each of us can do to change our habits, walking or cycling rather than using the car, looking at our carbon footprint, shopping ethically, upcycling, planting more trees, using less plastic, harnessing renewable energy, going on creation walks. But we also need to hold our governments to account. Christian Aid and TIF and many other aid agencies have so many ideas on their websites, writing to our MP, joining prayer chains, protesting and demanding actions, not just words. 
there needs to be a lifestyle change and also a systems change. And as a church community, what can we do together? Are there ways that we can make our church and its surroundings more environmentally friendly? We've made a small start by twinning our toilet and twinning our bin. We're called to love God and to love others. So the situation in the world should move us. Being a Christian is all about relationships. Relationships with God, relationships with others and a relationship with our planet. God commissioned us to be good stewards of his creation. Sir David Attenborough wrote, The Garden of Eden is no more. We are fundamentally changing nature and people need to fundamentally understand what is at stake. There is no planet B. To end with words of Archbishop Justin, as people of faith, we don't just state our beliefs, we live them out. One belief is that we can find purpose and joy in loving our neighbours. Another is that we are charged by our creator with taking good care of his creation. So what does the Lord require of us? In Micah, it says that we are to do justice, love kindly and to walk humbly with our God. But it may be also that we need to live simply so that others may simply live. Amen. exploration of creation can begin with prayer. We do not need to force our prayers into an environmentally friendly mould. In the Jewish tradition, prayer is always like that. In prayer, earth and heaven, there's a connection. The Hebrew word is not levakesh, to request, rather to fill it, to connect. So to the Jewish mindset, the essence of prayer is about linking creator with creation. The early church of Britain and Ireland would be really puzzled with our modern day quest to become eco-friendly in our prayers, considering creation wasn't a separate issue. Everything was connected with Christ. Nathaniel will now lead us in our intercessions and the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. And then we will close with the Lord's prayer. We pray for the church that she may be a beacon of hope throughout the world, reminding us all of our responsibility to care for and protect God's precious gift of creation. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the world, our common home, that through God's grace we may hear its cry of the damage done and be moved to protect it for the future generations to enjoy. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are already facing droughts, floods and storms, that God may grant them strength and hope for the future as they work to adapt to the changing climate. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our parish and our local community, that through the grace of God we may hear the urgent cry of the earth and of the poor and be inspired to respond at this crucial time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world we live in, that God may open our eyes to recognise the goodness of all creation and help us to do what we can do to restore and care for the wonderful gift that we have been given. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for world leaders, in particular this week with the G7 leaders, that God may grant them wisdom to make just decisions which respect the earth and all that lives in it, especially those who are poorest and most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our local community that through God's grace we may be good neighbours to each other and to the whole of creation. 
restoring and caring for all that God has made. Lord, in your mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Suffusing darkness. He spoke into the silence. Blowing clean life giving air into the space. He spoke into the silence. Warmth and cold infusing the air. He spoke into the silence. Solid ground formed out of gushing water. You spoke voice carrying over the sound. People, plants and animals came to life. You spoke each creation balanced against the next so life would be abundant and sustainable. You saw everything you had made and declared it to be very good. You spoke, choosing to give us humans stewardship over all that you had made. We speak and act. Darkness of pollution limits light levels and damages the air we breathe. We speak and act. Ground poisoned, burnt, stripped bare. We speak and act. Spoiling, limiting, destroying quality of life and life itself. We speak and act. Without hearing your call over the noise of the world to be good stewards. You speak, you create, you want us to be stewards of your creation. We come to you to relearn how to care for the earth and people you have made. Lord, we thank you for the beauty and wonder that can be seen in all of creation. As you breathed life into this world and into our beings, we ask you to breathe life into us once again. We pray for you to give us the strength to respond to creation in a way which reflects your loving care and concern for all things. As we breathe in your love, help us to breathe out your love. As we breathe in your grace, help us to breathe out your grace. As we breathe in your beauty, help us to breathe out your beauty. May we reflect your nature in all that we do. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our online service this morning. If you have any ideas how, as a church, we could become more environmentally friendly, how we could take steps to look after our planet, then please do give us your ideas or get involved in our steps. 
towards this. Praying for you all this week. If you ever would like prayer, then please do contact one of the ministry team at any time. So now our sending out. Go now. Go and revel in God's world. Go and be creative. Go and work for justice. Go and love your neighbours. Go and live simply so that others may simply live. Go and walk with God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. Amen.